Welcome to another Lumion Advanced Tutorial. Lumion 7.3 is just released with some innovative new features. This update, Lumion has unveiled an interesting new technology called LifeSync, as well as some other minor refined features. In this tutorial, I am going to do a quick overview of Lumion 7.3's LifeSync and share what we are able to do with this new feature. First off, you should have received the new Revit add-in for LifeSync in the Lumion 7.3 install link. But in case you didn't, it could be found here on Lumion's website, along with some more information on LiveSync. Now with that, I wanted to open up a project in Revit and demonstrate how this works. Now I have open here my first Revit project I ever made from scratch it's from several years ago. There are some issues with it, but I thought this would be a great example to demonstrate real-time editing with LiveSync. Now that I have this project open, we can find that Lumion has its own tab up here. Here is the live sync settings. Before we start, we need to have Lumion 7.3 or above open. Now we can open any scene in Lumion, whether it be a preset or something we've set up for this project in particular. In this case, I'm going to open a simple preset. Now that we're all set to go, let's go ahead and turn on our Revit live sync. Now it's probably going to take a little bit to start this up, but think of it this way. We're waiting now, so we don't have to wait later. Establishing this link may take some time, but everything's going to go butter smooth after this, even on large projects, you'll see. By default, Lumion will place the Revit Sync model right near the origin in Lumion. And if you don't know where the origin is, there's actually a little access point when you open every single project in Lumion. I barely ever even notice it, but that's where it's going to place it. Then, just like any other imported object, we can move it, rotate it however we want. But keep in mind that this is very different than an imported model or any other model that comes in Lumion. This is its own thing. So let's take a look at it. This is the model that came in from my Revit. Notice our Revit materials came in, but also take note that the glass became Lumion glass automatically. And also notice that when we go to materials, we cannot apply anything from Lumion onto there. The material adjustments are done in Revit, linked into Lumion. So now I've opened a different scene. Because, say I know this house is going to be at this location, and it's going to be looking out into this area, which is important to the overall architecture of my design. Now, I've set up a couple views in Lumion to frame the building the way I want, and even added some basic trees. I know that this live sync model isn't a rendering model. This will help give me an idea of how my changes I make in Revit will affect the way I want to see this building, what I want this building to be. And that's kind of the key point of Revit Live Sync is to be done in the early stages of design. And setting it up like this is something I felt could help me in designing this house. Now that we have everything set up in Lumia, let's jump back into Revit. In fact, let me display both on the screen again here. And now I'm just going to show you how quickly Live Sync works with the Revit model. And let's adjust the tint of the grass first so you can see this update. And now watch as I delete this arch really quickly how fast the life sync adjusts as well. Also when I undo. Now let's do something big. As I mentioned before, life sync is meant to be used earlier in a design phase. Although this model is pretty complete, let's try adjusting the roof pitch on the whole house and see how that changes its look. Now also keep in mind that this is a major geometry change, so Revit will delay and loom in a little bit as well in this syncing process. And there it has come in. But ignoring the roof I would have to fix, it gave this Mediterranean house a more Victorian look, which is interesting. And let's keep going with this idea and, and change some of the colors quickly and, and rev it and see what we can create right now. Also, here's a list from Lumion's website about what Revit material properties will work through LiveSync. I'm just using the diffuse texture and tint on this project here as you're seeing. Once all of my minor changes have come in, I'm able to go back to my views I set up and really get a good idea if I like these design changes or not. The fluidity in this is very nice, much better than having to constantly export and refresh our model in Lumion for each minor change. Although the roof and color change surprised me, I decided to return to my original styling for this house in this tutorial. Jumping back into my views, I found this floating vase. Let's see how easily we can fix that with Revit. Also watch the update time when I remove that window and then undo it. This is actually a moderately heavy model, especially on Lumion's end, yet it is updating very smoothly. 
Most models in early design phase will be lighter and update almost instantly through Live Sync. As you can see, we have it set to play right now, so it's live syncing. We can also pause it if we just want to work in Revit for a moment, or we can hit stop, which will cut the link. Only then can we change some of these options, but regardless if we do or not, re-establishing this link after stop will take time to start up again. Now here in the options, besides our origin point options, we also have three options which can improve the live sync for bigger models. As my demonstration plays, notice the details lost in most arcs and other complex models. All the walls remain the same and straight. Since we aren't going to be rendering from this live sync model, small details like that can be sacrificed to make sure this is updating quick enough to see our design changes. Once we're satisfied with our model, we can export right here. Nothing much has changed from before. And bring it into Lumia where we can start editing materials and really getting into the rendering. So I've just gone and lined up the new model with the live sync. And now unfortunately the align tool won't work on this. So you have to get as close as you can. And once we have it lined up, we can delete that live sync model. And I'm gonna go ahead and start texturing. Once I'm done, all we're ready to render. As I mentioned before, there were a couple other minor updates to 7.3. The big one for me is the ability to export 4K print and 8K posters JPEGs instead of really large bitmaps. And this saves me just one more step. Now I'm going to play our final results in the background from this Revit house we started with. And remember that all these scenes were set up using the Live Sync early on. Although Live Sync requires Revit and Lumion to be open on the same computer, it is possible to work with linked or collaborative models in Revit that would update as you continue to prep the scenes in Lumion. There is really a lot of change that could happen to the workflow in many architects. Being able to have the Lumion scene already halfway prepped before we even get a model it could really influence the final design if we bring it to life sooner in Lumion and frame it the way we want. I hope I was able to demonstrate this unique new feature in Lumion 7.3 and what it can do for you. That's all for this tutorial. Subscribe for more tutorials like this one, and until next time, thanks for watching.